Hey everybody, welcome to Watches with Dennis and the recurring Saturday live stream. I obviously am Dennis, and today we are going to discuss marine chronometers. But before we go into that, we'll do some of our typical catch-up sort of stuff that I like to do at the start of these things. So um, uh, in terms of videos, I did have one uh, pre-recorded video that I put out earlier in the week that had to do with some new G-Shocks. There is a Coca-Cola theme. Actually, there are two watches. They're both Coca-Cola themed. One of them is sort of inspired by the Coca-Cola green bottle, and, which I didn't like as much. And then the other one is the red color scheme in the square G shock format, which is the format I personally like with G shocks, though I don't think I'll be buying, I'll be buying either of these. But anyway, so there's a video out about that if you have not yet seen it. Uh, and hello, Kevin. A oh, welcome to the live stream. And in honor of those G-Shocks, I am wearing my uh, Square non-limited edition, non-Coke themed, regular old G-Shock on a, uh, I do have the adapter on this so I could wear the Barton silicone straps because uh, I find them a lot more comfortable than the resin that G-Shock likes to use, as robust as it is. And I think the, I do think the resin is reasonably comfortable until it gets wet. So if you start to sweat, kind of uncomfortable, or if you wash your hands and you get water under the band, and because I think I will, normally on the weekend, I try and go and exercise, which usually for me means walking around the city. So I will probably be sweating. And so the G-Shock is a, is a good choice for me there. Uh, other than that, uh, not a whole lot that I did see a live stream, actually, uh, that was linked yesterday, uh, apparently, because we've talked about the last couple of weeks, Timepiece Gentleman, Anthony was on, I can't remember, I think it was the JJ Hangout stream. I've seen it before a few years ago. I don't, I don't watch it regularly, but, uh, anyway, he got on and a couple, I guess, of the people who consigned watches with him were on. I only, I didn't watch it. Well, I caught it. Part of it live. I went back though and rewound it to see the discussion, and it was uh, weird. Uh, I don't have a link in the video for it, uh, but anyway, uh, apparently Anthony is still around despite saying that he wasn't around anymore uh, because he can't be consistent about anything. It seems so. Neff, what's happening? Not a lot. We're doing uh, introduction stuff before we dive in today's topic, which you can see from the video. Uh, subject is going to be marine chronometers. Uh, I guess, oh, I should go ahead and do my plugs. Oh, and uh, Ken has become one of the 99 Cent Club members. So thank you, Ken, for the support. And in the chat, I am posting a link to that. If you want to support the channel further than watching it, watching is the best thing you can do. Um, but you can always join the 99 Cent Club, which is 99 cents a month, because I think that's the lowest that YouTube would let me set it. But uh, separate from that, if you like to discuss watches uh, in a text format, uh, I do have a Discord channel. It's open to everyone. I have put a link in the chat. There is a link in the video description as well. And that link shouldn't expire, so you shouldn't have to worry about it if you're seeing this recorded, like the old ones. I had to make it a community server. Uh, my last server I set up, you didn't have to do that to get permanent links. So I thought it was going to be like this big arduous thing, and it actually took like eight minutes. So it wasn't nearly, it wasn't nearly so bad. But anyway, those are those are options there. And of course, if you're watching this and you want to like the stream, it does help. I don't know how it helps, but they tell me it helps, so it helps. Okay, so let's talk about marine chronometers, a watch format I have never owned. So I'm going to be talking, I'm just going to be making up a lot of stuff because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, in terms of the, the value of the marine chronometer in the olden days with ships and stuff, these were watches, they weren't wrist watches, but they were they were timepieces that were designed to be put on the ship uh, to keep really accurate time needed for navigation purposes and such. So the format, like the dial format in particular, is kind of what we mean when we talk about marine chronometers nowadays. So they're wrist watches and they are to varying degrees inspired by those chronometers uh, of the old days. And the reason why I thought we'd go ahead and talk about this, other than well, I've never owned one. It has been a format. Well, actually, I should correct myself. I have owned one. I just didn't think of it as a marine chronometer. But we'll get we'll get to that. I don't currently own one. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and show you this uh, from Glashuta Original, Original, or Geo, as as we commonly refer to it in English. 
And the this was just uh, came came out this week. Now this is a senator chronometer. So there, the senator series again is sort of a marine chronometer inspired uh, lineup that Geo has had for a long time now, it, over a decade at least. Uh, and this particular format of the chronometer of the senator is not all that new, but there are a few changes here. Actually, I have another one loaded up if you'd like to see. This is. This is what they've been having for a while now. So the format's very, very similar. Uh, the marine inspirational spots are, you know, we've got uh, the, the handset. This is the Roman numeral format. Um, we've got the small seconds down at the six o'clock position. And we have, uh, I believe, what is this? This is a power reserve. Yeah, sorry. I don't know the German, but I, I recognize the abbreviations. The uh, So the power reserve's up top here. Uh, this little dot is a day-night indicator and uh, date at the three o'clock and they do the pano date style. So, or big date as it's called. they call it pano date, but a big date as we would commonly call it. Uh, one of the things I will, I'll note, it's not unique to this watch. It's something Geo does on, on all their big dates is that uh, they actually have the discs on the same plane. Uh, which is something I think it looks really good. It doesn't look a lopsided long, a long in zona. Uh, they actually have, uh, the, because they kind of stack them, they have one disc lower than the other, and it is noticeable. Uh, and I personally think the geo format is more attractive. I imagine that the way Longa uh, positions their dates, it wasn't viable for them to do it, or they had another reason to not do it that way. Or geo was just more clever. I don't know. But the geo date format, I personally really like on their big dates. Um, so what's the difference besides color? Uh, and they, they have more than just this blue. I was, let me see if I can get you a little bit better view here. Of them. Well, that's a video. I don't want to play you the video. Okay. They also have this gold one, but with a white dial or frosted white dial, but the, uh, so they've had this blue one out for a few years now. Uh, these are fairly large watches, by the way, they're 42 millimeters. The thing with this new one, uh, which is in white gold is while it's still 42 millimeters, it's a, uh, in diameter. It's actually a millimeter thinner than this blue iteration. Uh, the other big change that I noticed, uh, well, there are two others. One is uh, the numerals. So these Roman numerals now are applied. They're actually printed in the prior iteration, still produced prior iteration. Uh, these are made out of gold and then they're, they're colored blue or coated in a blue color coding. Uh, the other change is the movement. So they, they both, I believe, use a manual wind movement. However, this uh, the older iteration used the 5801, and I think they got the 58, yeah, 08. Uh, the 5808 is the new iteration. Now, in terms of specifications, it's still 4 hertz. It's still the same power. Uh, they did some changes in the, in the decoration and, and such. So like silver plated, plated by friction, gay, gray, galvanized. Uh, it's hoping they... Geo's site, unfortunately, does not have as many photos as I would like. Uh, I think if I hop through this, you can get some better views. But um, there we go. There's a picture of the movement. We'll, we'll zoom in some. Sorry about this. They're one of the websites that definitely could use some upgrading. But there you go. This is the new movement. So I see enough saying that he loves the, the this uh, <clears throat> this glashuta and he likes the date on it. And the only thing is he wished it would have a red 12 o'clock marker. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm i trying to think if I'm going to touch on one that does later. Not a geo, obviously, but. Um, we might touch on one of those later. The thing though, uh, that's interesting. So I, yeah, I agree, Neff. I really like this watch. And so when I saw, I almost did a standalone video on it. Actually, the main reason I didn't is, uh, I couldn't get, I couldn't get good photos. <laughs> so normally I rely on the, the website of the, of the, uh, manufacturer for images so that I can fair use them because they're not writing an article. They're just trying to sell a watch. It's the, I, you know, going, going down the American rabbit hole of fair use. Uh, I have used media photos before, but I don't like to um, because I because you don't want to come across like you're competing with them because that would be a fair use violation. So anyway, so I was just sort of like I could crop these, uh, you know, these little uh, things out of here for these shots. But there were like four photos. It just wasn't enough. So if they give me a couple of really good renders, I can you know zoom in and do some stuff. But if I'm pulling these in as JPEGs or PNGs, 
it's a whole thing. So anyway, I decided, you know what? I need a live stream topic anyway. The thing that bothered me is the price point, and maybe that's worth having a little discussion here. So this new one is 32,300 US dollars. That is significantly more than the prior iteration that they still sell. It's about $5,000 more, I think. Uh, this one came on, comes on a variety of straps, but it's 12,600 or 27,600. So what is that? $4,800 more for this new one um, or 4,300 or excuse me. 4,700 more for this new one. So uh, as cool looking as it is, uh, I personally feel that that is way too expensive. Because here's the, here's the problem that I, that I run into with it, as cool as it is. Uh, and, and I know some of this isn't fair, but life isn't fair and that extends into watches, does, does it not? Um, so you're talking at 30 plus thousand dollars, would you buy one of these new or would you buy a used Along and Zona watch? So I think that's the problem that Geo runs into at this price point. Or you want to go, you don't even do that sort of comparison because you're saying, well, you're comparing used to new and that's not fair. And yeah, yeah, and which is all true. Would you spend $32,300 on this or get a basically the same format? You just lose your applied markers. You get a, a older movement that you won't even look at most of the time. And it's blue dialed instead of silver dialed and you save yourself almost five grand so that's the problem i have with this new senator as cool as it is i def i definitely like this new gray one with the blue Lo i think it looks significantly better and this one looks good but i think it looks better than the blue one so i definitely like the new one more but uh as well laid out as it is thirty thousand dollars this is this is a jama shop watch this is a watch i would then go and say all right let's see how much of a hit it takes it's a gold cased watch so I bet you it takes a 30% hit once it starts getting out there. Geo, unfortunately, uh, just it suffers uh, in terms of brand prestige for what it gets stacked up against because, unfortunately, they're going up against Longa, but they also play in the lower end of the pool. Uh, and so, yeah, at 30000 ish dollars, you can easily find uh, a Longa one used. Um, if you wanted to say, well, that's a, you know, that's more like a Pano date versus a Senator, uh, you know, if you want to maybe compare it to the Saxonia, you'll get it with, for way less. So I, again, it's, it's not apples to apples because this is a Marine format watch. This is a Marine chronometer style watch and I'm not citing Marine chronometer style long as I don't know if they actually have any, maybe they did in the past, but regardless, I, that's where I think, I don't think this one will do well for them because uh that's just how it is with geo i will note um that there was a study i think i talked about it in a prior live stream there was a study maybe from last year which did an analysis of the watchmaker hours invested into watches and the best bang for buck is glashuta original it's like they put in because you know a lot on a number not all of their watches but on a lot of their watches you know they'll do like the hand engraved balance cocks and there's hand finishing involved and the price points are actually lower than a lot of other brands that are going to that effort, like Breguet and Long Al Longa and, and things like that. But it's tough. I think it's tough for them. So next says, yeah, used Al Longa Zona any day, not even a choice. And that's the thing. I mean, I uh, probably one of my, and I really like the watch. I got rid of my Rolex OP and picked up uh, a Pano date and I with a moon face and I really liked it. Uh, I actually it's one of the few watches I had a non watch person compliment me on, but ultimately I didn't keep it very long because I was in a position where I realized I had so many watches. Why not trade these in, get rid of them, and and get a longa, which is what I really wanted, and so that's what I did. Um, and I don't regret that decision, though the longa I got didn't have the moon face, so I looked at them because they weren't much different on price, but. I'm trying to remember if, I, if they were ma manual wind and it was kind of like i would i would want a moon face to be automatic so i can put it in a winder because set in the moon phase i learned on that pano um very tedious especially because you had to like use a toothpick or otherwise you know some sort of toggle or to push the little uh recessed button in very annoying but uh kept it aesthetically pleasing i'll say that so Koji is here. Welcome to the live stream, Koji, and thank you for being a 99 cent club member. Uh, Glashuto Original is in a weird situation. Great watches, but only get compared to Longa, which isn't fair, as you mentioned. They're in a different bracket altogether. Pre-owned, 
their terrific value. Yes, um, though it you know it gets it gets it gets interesting because you know like we were talking like we're talking about here. I mean, thirty two thousand three hundred dollars for this new model. Um, I don't you know what? Let's I'm gonna search because it depends on the longa, right? So I mean, thirty two thousand is pretty far. I think pretty high up there for Glashuta Original, but um in terms of longer timepieces like it's it's i know it's it's significantly like a, a new non-used longer one is pretty pricey but what we're going to pull a saxonia okay because that gets you the big date and that gets you the time functionality um and what is this a manual wind yeah it's manual wind so we'll we will do a we'll do a manual wind version um if we can maybe we can't doesn't have a moon face so we don't need to worry about that i'm sorry i don't really uh, know saxonia's very well it's not a not a it's a, i like the format but it's kind of like to me a little more uh, i'd rather have a calatrava sort of thing uh at that point because i think they configure a little bit better well we might just have to go with an automatic because i want to i want to pick one with the big date or maybe with a power reserve i you know, you know what this is what i get for not shopping these ahead of time to decide what i want to do so that's an annual calendar that's not a fair comparison Maybe this longa 31, that's kind of the same thing. What's the price on that? Price upon request. Okay. This experiment went went really poorly. I was hoping for I was hoping for something more meaningful. Uh let's just pull the Saxonia automatic. Surely they're gonna list that price, right? They're not gonna add everything's upon request. What the heck? Longa, that's lame. Don't be lame. Tell us the price. Okay. So their thins run 23,000. So for by comparison. By comparison, much simpler watch though. But you can get a new longa for ten grand less than this new senator uh, chronometer. So, is that the right choice? Probably not. So let's talk about a cheaper. <laughs> let's talk about a cheaper marine. We're talking about marine chronometers. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go with. Oh, and I, I see Neff saying uh, that the longa thirty one. I guess hence the name. I hadn't even thought about it. <laughs> it has a thirty one day power reserve, so it's really pricey. I yeah I. I think I've heard of watches with even longer uh, reserves, but I, I I couldn't name them for you. So, okay. So here we are. This is the Marine Classique uh, 40 Arabic white dial. Now, this is from Stova. So this is another German brand, not in Glashuta. It feels like all the German brands are in Glashuta. They're not. They're somewhere in the Black Forest. I don't know where the Black Forest is, but it's somewhere else. And that's where Stova is. And they have other formats too. I only showed this Arabic a, a dial because the senator has a Roman numeral dial, but they got a Roman numeral version of this too. We can we can take a look at them. Hmm. Again, um, let me close some of these windows out. This handset very similar to the Glashuta. Let me zoom this in a bit. Didn't have to make that sound effect. See, we kind of got that handset. Same thing going on here. So very similar handset. Uh, I actually first saw these when I was waiting a couple of years ago for their, they, they, Stoba likes to do an, an annual, they call it an advent calendar sale. They, Stoba doesn't use distribution in the, you have to buy direct from Stoba. So, so Stoba normally doesn't, like there aren't discounts because you only buy from the manufacturer. However, they do take watches to shows, and since people handle those, they liquidate those at the end of the year in an advent calendar sale where they put a new strap on it. The watch has been handled, but it's not been owned by someone else, kind of like shopworn in a way, I guess. And um, anyway, so that's where I picked up my Fleeker, and that's what I knew them for because they were one of the original Fleeker manufacturers. However, they have quite a history in marine watches too. So this is just one of those uh, options that they have available um, and you get a lot of customization, like you can go and say, I want to get a watch with a date uh, feature, and it would be at the six o'clock position, you see, as I just turned on here. Um, and so that that's some, kind of like how Laco does. They do a lot of that stuff. You can choose if you want a, a hand wind only movement, you can have an automatic movement. Um, but 40 millimeter watch, very thin, 10.3 uh, millimeters. Uh, and that's the automatic. You can lose another millimeter if you want to go hand wind, kind of like the Senate Senator chronometer. This would be 9.2 millimeters in size. Um, so Stova, I think, is a 
just a really like if you're really into uh, marine chronometers, as you can see off to the side, I don't have it in U.S. dollars, but it's 850 euros. This is one of their cheaper watches too, uh, compared to their Fliegers, which typically run about I think maybe 400 dollars more or 400 euros more. But uh, as an option, it's a format I very much like. Here is actually their this is their they have a very large marine selection, and you can see it, it ranges quite a bit. I showed you one of the cheaper end models but again they get up to closer to 1500 euros depending on what you want uh not counting the chronographs because they do have chronograph options but you see you can get them with these really like uh this creative that's about the only way i can describe it dial configuration here where we've got the romans but they actually on the nine and the three they've they've uh they've angled them they've turned them at 90 degree angles so very unique look uh, plus, there's like a star pattern thing going on in the background here, probably representing something nautical because, you know, marine. Uh, so they got those. You've got the small seconds options. You can uh, you can do them in, in Arabic or you can do them in Roman. So, again, depending on what you're after, there's a whole lot of variety here and it's pretty approachable. Not the most affordable marine style. You can get marine style for cheaper, but you want a, a brand uh, with some pedigree um a little bit off the beaten path because people don't walk into macy's or into any authorized dealer at all really and buy stovas you have to you essentially have to order them or get them used so so it's a anyway it's an interesting brand uh they generally use salitas um but they do as you can see they do some uh they do finish them so they they brand them they you know they stamp them and they usually do like a striping and stuff as you can as you can tell so they're not undecorated just boring uh, uh watch movements and because they do tend to have display case packs so anyway it was just another uh option that i, I wanted to show so going from that like thirty two thousand dollar chronometer like this granted you know big date uh power reserve much more complicated but the same basic handset uh basic small second structure basic dial and, and now we're on the we're on the arabic but it's the same price as the uh uh, not the one I'm showing you, but uh, because this one has a small seconds, but the Arabic versions are the same price. So, so Roman or Arabic, either way, very, very, uh, you know, very, very customizable. And a lot of choices are available through a brand like Stova. So I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, I, the main reason I don't have a Marine chronometer style watch anymore is they fall more in that dress watch vein. Uh, it depends, depends on the brand, but aesthetically i tend to see them that way and as you all who have seen me before know i'm trying to avoid buying more dress watches though now that i'm changing jobs i might actually have to be in suits more than i have been so maybe it's time to think about having more than two dress watches i don't know it sounds like a rabbit hole of spending money so we do not want to we do not want to go that route at this time Neff says i think it's Dar dornbrew bluth and sone they do a really nice marine chronometer they are not in today's list but thank you for the suggestion for the audience koji says is the marine chronometer qualification similar to cosk maybe once upon a time um i don't know if it ever met a specific because marine chronometers were developed so long ago with with seafaring that i i think they just had to be accurate i don't know what the like if there was a specific like Swiss standard of what they were going to be at this day and age, it's more about the aesthetic. So I, I mean, like, uh, Stove is not going to go ahead and, uh, and get cost certification on the one. They might regulate it within the standard, but it's not going to be like with a certain, you know, cert certified kind of like how the, they might very well, GO might do that with their Senator chronometer, but Basically, yeah, there's an expectation of accuracy. So that was the idea at the time because it was so important for ships. So hence calling them chronometers, but it was on the manufacturer, I guess, to provide the quality or else lose their contracts to the governments that they were selling them for the ships or whatnot, I guess, is my understanding. This day and age, it's really about the look. So speaking of that, we will... Um, jump to my next one right quick so this is a brand that um is you know when i heard about lee snardon it was about the freak like when i got into collecting watches which was really like 2020 uh that's what i knew lee snardon for because it was so cutting edge and, and unique however i did not i probably should have known but i did not 
their tradition is very much nautical, extremely nautical. And that becomes very obvious when you go to their website. So they have a ton of nautical themed wa uh, watches. Uh, it's a watch that I found out was often associated with like the Russian Navy. So there's a there's a big interest in in the brand over in the East uh, because of that. And this is just one example I've grabbed. Twelve thousand dollar watch. So I've smacked us in between the uh, the sh not exactly in the middle, but in between uh, the Stova and the Glushuta Original that we talked about earlier. Uh, this one's very uh, interesting in that it does like a it's a dual time watch. Uh, so you've got your your date functionality uh as well as the um i think the way this works is you cycle the these two pushers on the sides it will actually navigate the uh, gmt function and you have one time represented here in the nine o'clock disc in arabic and then you have your handset which you can move around to uh to represent the other time zone so very cool concept but you see Still, yet again, kind of like the chronometer handset. You know, the handset's a big part of being a marine chronometer. So we got the marine chronometer handset uh, going on here, at least so far on the ones we've looked at. We got the small seconds, like we often see. Uh, we got the big, bold uh, Roman numerals, which are like the like prototypical marine chronometer look. Um, this looks pretty good. Like this would never be a watch I would own because uh, I, you know, I have issues when the hour markers get cropped. So that's common with a lot of marine chronometers, including some I showed you, like the Stova ones. But so this cropping going on here with the six and the seven would never work for me. Not to mention the disc, uh, the the second time zone crops into the nine, uh, and and the part of the date crops into the two. So it's kind of like ugh, they they. Don't, if they didn't do that, I really like this one. But but you at least know Dawn. It's not all about just showing you watches Dennis likes. So I wanted to show it anyway because I thought it was a really cool watch, even though it's just not for me. And they got a whole bunch of other others too. If you like want to ever go down the Ulysse Nardon rabbit hole, they got a lot of watches. So uh, especially in this in this category. So I just thought it was pretty interesting. Um, relatively approachable price point. Uh, Twelve. I mean. Uh, Ulysse Nardon is a brand that uh, that trades for less used, uh, so uh, definitely one I would gray shop or or used shop because there's no you won't need to pay a premium most of the time for for their watches. They do sometimes do a number of limited editions though, so you know it it can be a little bit tricky. But if you're into marine chronometers as a look, UN is a company to go and explore because they've got a lot of options. Just be careful going like in their classic section, <laughs> like don't do that from work because they've got some. Let's just call them erotic designed watches, um, which was one of the first things I ever ran because I saw classic. I thought, oh, well, those will probably be the more affordable watches. And I was like, um, not sure in this day and age that that makes a lot of sense. But kind of, again, got to do a pinball analogy. Pinball was often known for that sort of like cheesecakes art style approach, and it's not in vogue anymore. But sometimes you see companies do revised art packages that lean into that soft core stuff. And it's kind of like... Um, Maybe 20 years ago, there was a market for that. Maybe there's still a market for it, but it's definitely not one that uh, that people want to see promoted very much in this day and age. <coughs> Excuse me. So catching up on chat, Koji says, being an inveterate dress watch nerd, I love the aesthetic, but the accuracy is a nice bonus. Yeah, and I've, uh, you know, with dress watches, I, it's been so hit or miss for me. Um, uh, none of my dress watches really have been cutting edge on accuracy as I think about it. Like, the first one I really got and that surprised me because of the price point was my was my Reverso. And the Reverso was one of my least accurate, without being like ridiculous, like it's not a 4R36 Seiko or, or an Orient movement or a Vostok, which was horribly, uh, hor it was still within spec, but horribly inaccurate. It wasn't like that bad, but it was, you know, double or triple out of Cosk. And I was just surprised at the price point. I kind of thought like everything would be regulated within the Cosk standard. And it wasn't. Um, I think my my Longa maybe within cost after I got it serviced definitely wasn't beforehand. And it's still like the amplitude on that is surprisingly low to me. But it is an older design movement, so that's probably the, given it's been serviced is probably the case. I mean, it, it it uses a double barrel system, so it seems really consistent. But you know, you kind of get to the point where you play with modern watches a lot. You start to think, oh yeah, we want all of our amplitude at 300 degrees and just not, isn't always the case. I think that my reverse is the same way, pretty low amplitude. Uh, granted, those are three hertz movements, watches too. Um, my Cartier Santos wasn't within cost. 
uh, standard. And, um, you know, I'm trying to think if my, maybe my Portuguese was, don't think so though. Still like within 10 seconds a day. So I didn't freak out about it, but yeah, I, you know, it just depends. Uh, next is, don't they do the thousand hours on a reversal? They do some sort of test, but they don't cost certified. Um, I don't remember what their test was. And another thing to bear in mind is my reversal was purchased used. So it could just need to be in, be serviced. But the amplitude wasn't such. A, I usually go off of amplitude to determine a servicing. So I don't service on a regular interval. Uh, I service on, on two instances. The watch isn't working right. or um, there, there's something where it's way out of whack. So like my Explorer two, I owned for like 13 years and it was gaining about a minute every week or two. And it had been inaccurate for a while, but it needed a service essentially. It wasn't broken, but it was like, okay, it's too inaccurate. It needs a service. Sent the longa back to Watchbox where I got it from because the amplitude was like dropping below 200 when you still had a fourth of the power left in a double barrel system that shouldn't happen unless it needed a service. Watch worked fine. Accuracy was okay. Uh, actually, no, accuracy was not okay. Accuracy said service too because it was plus 90 seconds a day. So um, I think maybe it was plus 50 seconds. But anyway, it was ridiculous. And now it's not. I, you know, I, I have my own time grapher. You can download it incidentally if you don't want to buy a time grapher, which why would you unless you I used to shoot it in video. Um, and so I have it in my closet with my my stuff for like doing watch reviews because I still use the time grapher to I don't film that part anymore, but I run it and put all uh, put all my watches in six positions on a spreadsheet and, and put that as part of my reviews. Um there's a watch accuracy app for, for free. You can download on a cell phone. I just use a cell phone speaker. It's been within like a second of the time grapher. So there it's super accurate. I don't know if it can, if it does the amplitude. Uh, I don't think it does, but if you want to just know seconds per day, definitely, uh, definitely is a good app uh, and definitely worth using. So uh, very, very accurate because it's all the time graphers using anyway as a microphone to detect uh, differences. And then it just calculates it up. So you don't have to sit there and wait a day to go. I wonder how off my watch is. Oh, I guess it's off a lot. Um, Neff says, speaking of rabbit holes of spending money, oh dear, this is a digression I can already tell. Did you decide what new watch you're going to get to celebrate your new job, Winky Face? No. Yeah, well, okay. What I have been most looking at at this point, I've been just looking at stuff um, in general, but where I've been leaning most is uh, uh, H. Mosier Pioneer line. So I've always really liked their Fume dials, especially if you can see them not rendered, but actually in photo or video. Very, very attractive. Now, historically, the red one was the one I really liked, but I've already got a red dial Orient, which has that similar effect. And since I'm not planning to get rid of the Orient watch, I'm kind of like, ah, I don't think I need two red dial watches. I don't own enough watches for that. So I've been exploring some of their blue dial watches because currently I do not own a single blue dial watch, which I was probably, I'm probably the only person on this, uh, in the chat or on this video right now who doesn't own a blue watch. But as I think of, I'm trying to think, do I, am I forgetting one? And I do actually have a blue, blue dial watch, but I, I don't. I don't think so. I had a Vostok that was blue at one point. Um, so they have a number of blue dial, like they have the funky blue, they which I like a lot, which has the 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 black uh, like PVD coating. So I've been looking at that one a lot. I don't like the mega cool. It looks you know it's like that, that greenish blue, and that's because I have that. Okay, this is my closest to blue I have is my Seiko which is my Save the Ocean, which is kind of that turquoisey blue. So I don't want another one of that. So I don't I don't like that one. Uh, I like the the Arctic blue. The I like all the other blues other than that kind of like menthol blue is how I think of it, that kind of greeny blue. Uh, and then the, they have the green dial watch. I used to own a green watch. My OP, my Oyster Perpetual 34 millimeter was a green dial watch. And I liked the dial a lot. The watch was just a little, a little small for me uh, and as comfortable as it was. Uh, I almost kept it anyway, um, but like I was fine wearing it. I didn't mind wearing it, but the values during the pa pandemic got so high, I traded it. I traded it towards the my Glashuta original that I then traded towards my Longa. So I have lost all that up uptick value in all those trades. But, you know, it's a journey, uh, not a destination. I mean, that's what we'll say, to not cry. Um, so anyway, so so yeah, 
that's kind of where I've been mostly looking at Mosher Pioneers, but not exclusively. Uh, another brand I've been looking at a lot is uh, Parmigiani Fleurier, um, but I'm trying to limit myself to the sports watch style. The problem is I I I can't try that. Like there's not a Parmigiani dealer in the area, so I can't try them on ahead of time. I'm not comfortable with their new line, which is running the, the Tondas that are running like twenty plus thousand dollars. They maybe you can find used for eighteen grand. Not not interested in that. Their older ones where they de- the 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 logo wasn't the, just the abbreviations, the full name. So it's not as attractive of a logo. They have some very interesting watches, though. So I've been exploring a lot of those. The problem is Parmigiani is mostly in that sports watch style is chronograph. And I'm not interested in chronograph. So I've been trying to d- kind of dig through and what's available there. And they've got quite a bit of an assortment. So that's the second thing I've been looking at, Neff. And the third one I've been looking at is Chrono Swiss. So um not so much their older watches i've been looking at kind of what the company's been doing lately and they have some very interesting dials uh the chrono swiss likes to play a lot in retrograde sometimes it's retrograde minute sometimes retrograde hour Uh, i think they even do retrograde second and i don't have a retrograde watch and so it's been so that's the third one so chrono swiss parmigiani and Mosier. those are the three that i've spent most of my time looking at i have spent a little bit of time looking at Union, uh, excuse me, not Union Glue Shoot, that they don't sell those in the U.S. Uh, Ulysses Nardon, I've looked a little bit at Ulysses Nardon as well. I've looked at a number of things, but those are the big three that I've been looking at. Mosier, Parmigiani, Chrono Swiss. Well, Koji, you've just ruined my my specialness by saying you do not have a blue dial watch. What, what is wrong? Why why do you not like blue? Might be might be something to analyze and think about why do i not like blue i must like blue fine i'm wearing my blue ku shirt today one of one of them my 20 my 2012 final for sure um neff oh neff's already issuing edicts he demands that definitely to get the Mosher. i love the new one with the bezel the 40 millimeter one watch box always seems to have p.s i don't own a blue oh my okay so no one owns a blue all right what's going on what's wrong with everyone here this is why you guys should be watching these other the other streams and get you indoctrinated into the blue into some blue watches or something. I I say as I continue to not own one. Um, forty millimeter one watch box seems to have. See most of the most of the pioneers are forty three, which uh, I've looked at the lug to lug. I I can wear it, uh, which is fine. Yeah, I saw there's a new uh, blue and forty. I don't know if Watchbox had one in stock because I've checked them. I've checked Watchfinder. Uh, Mosher's, some of the big used dealers don't seem to carry Mosher. Like Bob's Watches doesn't seem to carry Mosher. Uh, I don't think David SW carries Mosher. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've checked a lot on, uh, Chrono, uh, 24. There actually is, a one of the black PVD, uh, funky blues that Watchbox had one and they've sold it since. Uh, it was a few weeks ago. There's a similar price one I saw on Chrono, but I saw Luxury Bazaar has it. And I don't know if I'm comfortable buying from Luxury Bazaar, quite frankly. So I've, I've tagged it to keep track of it for pricing purposes. But, I, but uh, I'm also a little, I can't always tell in photos, the PVD might, I've seen some where the PVD is damaged a little bit. And I, again, I don't know how much. I put scratches on all my watches. So not the biggest deal, but I'm not sure if the PVD is going to look as good as uh, as the steel look is, which is too bad because the funky blue dial is really cool. They do it in their Endeavor line as well, but the Endeavor line comes across as more of a dress watch, and we've already talked about that I'm not looking at a dress watch at this time. Frank has saved us. He has a blue day just finally. Someone sane, unlike the rest of us, someone who knows what they're doing. And blue day just are a very good, very classic look, I, in my opinion. Neff says, 40 millimeter looks like a diver in the titanium with that amazing class Longa and IWC use. Okay. I probably haven't looked at that one because of the pricing. Yeah. I, I looked at some with the dive with like the dive bezel. I, I already have a number of dive watches, so that's not the route I'm personally going to go. But speaking of where we're going to go, we got to go on to another marine chronometer because that's what, thank you, Neff, for completely sidetracking. Well, you, you did say that you were going to send me down a rabbit hole and you did. So I'm gonna bring us back on task, folks, because people who are watching the recording are like, we don't care what this random guy on the internet is talking about in terms of buying watches. We wanna know about marine chronometers. Breguet, Breguet, we gotta go back to expensive, right? So 
We did Glasutra Original, $32,000 watch, super expensive. We did Stova, where you have marine chronometers under 1,000 euros, quite approachable. We did Ulysse Nardon, which was a little bit over $10,000, it was 11,000. Um, you get those used for under, under five figures though, pretty easily, uh, most of the time. So let's do Brega. Now, Brega, these are big. This is like almost 44 millimeters in diameter. Unfortunately, uh, and there are a lot of variants. I'm showing you a weird one because I, again, I thought let's let's look at something kind of kind of neat. Now, pricing, the all right, ninety six thousand uh, dollars. They're not all going to be that high, but I think I started with the cheapest one because a lot of these are in gold. Um, in fact, I don't know if they do any in steel at all. Maybe this one might be steel. Uh, no, not at seventy two thousand. It better not be. No blue dial in gold. Okay. Um, so Breguet has had for a long time marine uh, chronometer style watches. They do the handset a little bit differently. Um, the thing with uh, with Breguet is, uh, from my perspective, setting aside the really really high price point, um, is I don't really like the new ones. I like the uh, the one where they used to do a big date down like at the six o'clock. Uh, Federico over on Federico talks watches, who owns Delray Watch. He has a marine Breguet in the format that I like. And you can get those on the secondhand market well under $20,000. They normally trade around 15 last I looked. This is the new format. This is the more approachable uh, price point uh, version as well, which is what? Yeah, 18300 So around the price point of their new type 20s. But uh, I don't like the new the new 3 o'clock. I mean, new. I'm saying new compared to the old one. They've had these. These have been out for a while. But as you can, uh, we'll zoom in some. Well, they maybe we'll zoom in some there we go you know i i mean they've got a creative little cutout here because the i don't like this other than i like the blue sunburst because i love sunburst dials so i think the dial looks great um i'm sure they probably engine you know roast engine turned this and what and whatnot they that finishing on breguets is incredible but uh, I want to show it as an interesting example, but I, whereas I, I talked about like with this U, UN, like I don't like the number cropping and stuff. I like the overall approach on this. I basically don't like any of it. I don't like the hands. They didn't used to do this weird hand set for the Marine style watches. Uh, I, I don't like the three o'clock date. I, I, it's kind of cool that they cut it out in kind of a weird shape and not a perfect rectangle, but, um, but that's only, as cool as that kind of is, I don't like any of these numerals, these applied numerals, which are like fill. I, I guess they're filled in with loom or something, but they look weird. They just, it, the whole thing other than the dial itself looks weird. I don't like it. But you might like it. So I wanted to show it to you guys. So um, so anyway, Breguet, they've done a lot of marine watches. Uh, they they definitely have more attractive ones. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna chrono this here while while we are talking, and uh, and try and find you what what I mean by one that I like. But because I might, I might as well at least give you give you something that that's I think cool. So there we go. I've got a promoted one here. This is a chronograph version. But this is the style I liked. See the numerals are classic and classy no cropping either um nice patterning on the turning i mean just really cool intricate work still got the, the hands i don't love but i could look past that for a nice big date um i could look past the hands in favor of all this other stuff but the new ones the new ones are just are just not not doing it for me um See, here's another newer, newer one. See, it's just not, it's just not as good. I mean, I like the work on the dial, but not as much. And the the, the applied uh, hour markers are just ugly, really, really ugly. Um, here's another one in the in the white, which which in some ways might look better. But again, beautiful turning on the yeah. The old ones were great. I don't know why they moved away. I don't know why they moved away from it, but anyway, my opinion on that. Uh, all right, clicked on that one. Sorry there. No, don't be sorry enough. Be happy. Be glad that we had a fun discussion. I just pity those who choose to watch the recording. 
Neff also says, I miss the old big date Marine, but this Brege does have a really interesting world time complication. Yes, and that's part of the reason I wanted to jump over to, to the the version I showed you guys originally was the the world time aspect to it, I thought was was pretty cool. So we'll we'll go ahead and throw it back up here on the screen. So they caught the Marine or a Mundi. Um, but it's got dual preset time zones with instant jump, synchronized date. Day night city displays. Uh, world times uh, can be really hard to pull off. And what I did like about this, as busy as the style is, this with the with the cities down below, super clean, super clean. Most world timers just feel like a cluttered mess. Maybe they shouldn't have put like this uh, like AT and T logo of these lines on top of this wave pattern for the ocean already over the the world. That seems a bit much to me, but the actual use of the cities really liked it a lot. Very, very clean. Um, unfortunately, the rest of the watch is up, is a mess uh, to me, so I, I can't I can't really get behind it. But um, hey, uh, some of you might enjoy it. There's always there's a there's different watches for all of our different personalities. So anyway, so that is uh, I'm trying to think if that was the uh, last watch that I had for you all. It is not. I have one more. Now, I said I've never owned a marine chronometer, and then I kind of had to correct myself because I didn't think of it as a marine chronometer. However, they, it, but its history is such, and that is IWC's Portuguese, or, or Portuguese, depending on what year we're looking and talking about. Hmm. So this is a Portuguese or automatic. Uh, pretty straightforward. Date at the six o'clock. We have the leaf style hands. We don't have you know the typical marine, and that's part of the reason I didn't think about it is it didn't have the, sort of that marine chronometer handset that I think about, like we saw here and here and here, or even the weirdness that was Breguet's kind of like we wish we had the Mercedes hand from Rolex, but we want to mess it up, and make it ugly. So just leaf style hands. Uh, incidentally, on this particular version, this is the small seconds at the nine o'clock, and then they have the power reserve over here on three o'clock position, which is an eight day power reserve. Pretty impressive. Um, in terms of pricing, this is a, around the Ulysse Nardon price that we talked about earlier, it's $13,100. The reason why I'm showing this is, first of all, while most people may think of pilot watches with IWC, their Portuguese line, I think, is their second most popular line. It's pretty, it's a pretty big deal. And I had one. Uh, back when they still call it the Portuguese, I used a pocket watch size movement. That's part of the reason it was part of my trade bait for the Longa. Uh, and the reason for that is at it was like a 44 millimeter dress watch. It was, I mean, you uh, you had to rock it. You had to rock it to wear it. And while it didn't hang over my wrist, I don't know if I could have gone two millimeters more. Uh, and it was, it was pretty big. It was pretty big. I, I enjoyed it, though, quite a bit. Uh, the other thing that I had an issue with that one is that it was hand wind only. It was actually difficult to hand wind, like painful. I needed to use like a, I kept a, like a microfiber cloth on the uh, desk to clean my watch faces off on occasion. I actually would use that to grip and wind that watch because once you got it about halfway wound, it started to get really hard to wind, which is fine. Uh, but uh, as much as it cost, it wasn't fine enough to keep. Anyway. The history of the Portuguese watch line is why it's important. Uh, when IWC was approached by some Portuguese clients, they wanted a wristwatch with pocket watch levels of, excuse me, I thought they wanted one with quote unquote pocket watch levels of accuracy. However, when I was doing research, I guess what they actually asked for was a wristwatch with marine chronometer levels of accuracy. So, the Portuguese is inspired by marine chronometer style watches. And when IWC made it for them, the only way they could achieve that level of accuracy in that era, and I think this was the 30s, in that time period, was to use a pocket watch movement. It was the only movement that they could regulate to that degree of accuracy, to chronometer, what was at the time, marine chronometer expectations. So that's what they did. And of course, the problem was, and the watches have been a huge part of the history of IWC, but it's hit and miss on the sales because they're so big. And even now, this is a 42.3 millimeter uh, watch. It actually does have some lug on it too. So, um, but anyway, they have quite a few of these and they, they redo the, the I, you know, I don't think IWC is ever going to get rid of the series. Um, 
they have some that are hand wine they do these automatics um I, reasonably decorated I, I i you know if you're not into their pilot line i would definitely explore the portuguese or line uh but just bear in mind it just may be too big but anyway it was a uh it was a format that was inspired by marine chronometer so while i think it deviates a little bit the overall dial structure of the hour markers and stuff is still very much in that vein it's it's as easily in the vein as a pocket watch though and i this one i felt the least confident about calling a marine chronometer but the expectation on its development was around the marine chronometer so we're going to call it a close enough and i'm going to throw it in here for your consideration so those were those were everything that i that i was going to show you so the we, we talked about the iwc uh, portuguese are automatic we talked about Breguet's Marine Watches, focusing very much in on the Marine uh, Aura Mundi, which by far was the most expensive watch that we covered today. We talked about Lulis Nardon, which has a ton of Marine Watches. They're known for nautical watches in general, but we actually explored the Marine Torpillo. I don't even ever think I tried to, I didn't say the name because I don't know how to pronounce this. Torpillier, is that torpedo in French? Torpillier, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Marine Torpillo. I think that's wrong. Uh, dual time. Uh, but they have a number of other uh, chronometer style watches as well. We talked about Stova. I actually started with the uh, the 40 classic uh, Arabic numeral style, but this is the, the Roman numeral format, which is the more traditional format. And we had started with what inspired me to do this live stream, which was Glashuta's new, slightly modified, $5,000 more expensive uh, Senator chronometer with the applied uh, Roman numerals in gold at five thousand more dollars than the one with the printed uh, markers and the blue dial. So that's really all I have for you all today. Uh, as a reminder, next week, not Saturday. I'll probably I haven't decided yet. I'm hoping, hoping. I, I, I why, why am I hoping? I do what I want. All right, I still will plan to do a Saturday live stream like I have been. However, at eight p.m central time 9 p.m eastern do the i don't know do the conversion 6 p.m uh pacific on friday and that's friday the uh the 25th so next week uh we're going to do a live stream with a panel we're going to play a game we're going to do cheap moderate expensive or sometimes i in my folder where i save all this stuff i call it the three-tier game so inspired by this is something that ken our one of our uh, 99 cent club members had suggested uh, a while ago uh, and we did the game one time and uh, in that we take a category of watches I actually have the categories listed on the video the video if you want to put a reminder it's already up uh, like it's you can go under my live tab and you can set a reminder if you want to be told when we actually go live but um, what we do is there'll be a, like a category like dive watch and I've built a, a matchup of a cheap version, cheap is defined as under a thousand dollars, moderate version that's defined as a thousand dollars to just under twelve thousand dollars, and then expensive, which is twelve thousand or more. And the panel will see those watches, have a discussion, and everyone will give their pick in terms of which one is the best value, however you want to define value. So I'm still building out the, the panel in terms of who all will be on it. I've got some pending invites. So I don't I don't know everyone yet who will be doing it, but I have a I have few confirmations already. So it, it will happen. So that will be next Friday. Uh, and then I'll probably do the Saturday live stream, uh, even though I'll be tired. And hopefully I have a, we either have a topic or we'll just do some Q&A or something. But I'm trying to do this to be consistent. But that is it for today's live stream thank you everyone who was able to tune in live if you've watched the recording i hope you enjoyed it feel free to leave a comment regarding any of the topics uh some suggestions on marine chronometer style wrist watches that i should have covered that i didn't that would probably be a good one for people to be able to farm for ideas if they're shopping for one and otherwise i will talk to you all on the next video take care everybody